it's a checking day today. I'm here at Clipson Old Quarter just having a look at the Purple Emperor lava that Nick and Samantha Brown and myself have been monitoring throughout the autumn and winter months and now here we are in spring. Most of the lava, if not all of them to find today and check on, should be L4 but I've only come a matter of about a hundred yards onto the site and good news and bad news already. Good news is that on a tree behind me there's a nice L4 lava in place there. It's one that I haven't seen since Nick and Sam first pointed it out many months ago. Bad news, however, is that on a tree to the left of where I'm stood, I can see the malt where it successfully malted into L4, but there's no sign of the caterpillar. I've had a good look on the nearby foliage. It's either gone for an incredibly long wander and gone further up the tree or into the tree, or we've lost it to predation or other means. So, good and bad news to start this little video. It's surprising how different trees, in this case goat sallows, are at different stages. When I did the last video updating you on the status of purple emperor lava here, I went not half a mile or so really as the crow flies or as the emperor flies onto Budby South Forest. And there, lava was still all L3, the ones that I found. And they'd not even started feeding yet. Whereas here at Clipson Old Quarter, they had started feeding and the first L4 was recorded. But it was the trees. Obviously, if the buds aren't open or are only just open, then the larva can't feed. And most of the ones on Budby were behind even this one here. This particular goat sallow has never had purple emperor on it that we've recorded. Hopefully, in the next few years, this one will start to be used, but I will have a look at it to see if there's one on. But our next larva may well be down about 100 yards or so from where I am now. That's the poorly larva and the very ill-looking larva, which had fed when we looked at it last time, but I doubt if it'll still be there today. Of course, a big difference is the site itself, how the silver birches are all now in full leaf, beautiful light green leaves. Trees that you can see which are still to come into leaf, most of them are, I believe, red oaks. And like the English oak, they're well behind silver birch and hawthorn and a number of other trees. But the place is starting to green up and look beautiful. Well, unsurprising news from the next tree on which lava were on. This is the one where the lava was on, sat on the leaf scar all winter and then disappeared. And the poorly lava that was here last time has succumbed. This is where it was sat on. And you can see it's even eaten a couple of parts of the leaf to no avail. We're not doing so well today. But maybe we might find another new one somewhere along the way. It's a fabulous goat sallow, this one behind here. A couple of years ago, it was used by female purple emperors, and there were at least two eggs and a couple of larva resulting from those eggs on it. But 2023, it wasn't used, and Nick and Sam and myself have failed to find any lava on it over the winter period. Part of that may well be down to its positioning, or rather, 
its new positioning. Two or three years ago, silver birch grew all around this tree, apart from on the side where I'm standing. It was open there, but the tree was in more or less partial shade or even shade for the majority of its width. Now that's gone, purple emperors are unlikely to use it unless one bumps into the tree on the northern side, which is the most shaded side of the tree, because purple emperor females prefer sallows growing in shade or partial shade. And the management of cutting down all of the silver birch here has rendered that tree probably useless until the silver birch grows up. The only bit of shade it gets is late afternoon and evening by the trees just at the back of it there. But by then, female purple emperors are tucked up. So it's a shame that such a good tree is likely to be unused now by purple emperors. Just goes to show how much thought site management need to put in to managing any site for purple emperors. Now up near the centre tree and first of there are known to be three now on this tree but two that i know the locations of and this is the one that we've been following all winter and this looks very freshly molted into l4 now it was preparing to molt the last time we looked at it if i turn that round not much left of its favored leaf at the moment i think that's very freshly molted But it's doing well and it's very healthy and is on the exact same branch on the end of the branch that it was on last time and it has just recently molted in fact you can see the molt just under the back end of the caterpillar that the whiteness there so i think this may well have molted either this morning or yesterday Lovely. We'll check on the other one, see if we can locate it again. It is unmarked, but hopefully I can find it. A bit of success then with this one. Well, the lava that had molted 12.4 in the last video turns out that it was a new lava. A lava that Nick and Sam or myself didn't know about and wasn't one of the five that we knew were on this tree. And it is still here and looking very well. See if you can spot it. It's there if you can't see it. And looking very, very well. Still L4, of course. Got a bit more growing to do to get anywhere near L5 yet, but... The cool nights that we've had, in fact, there was a really good frost last night. All the cars were white over and the roofs of the houses. It doesn't seem to have affected any of the foliage, but frosts in April aren't unusual. Not in the first week or two of May either. Sherwood's renowned for it, it parts. So the colder weather, cold nighttime temperatures may well be slowing development a little bit. But this one here is doing beautifully there you can see what a well-developed caterpillar this is very much a miniature form of a full-grown caterpillar to be honest this typical posture typical resting position that's its favored resting leaf now by the looks of it it's had a previous one in fact there's been two previous ones I've just changed the angle here because it just emphasizes the camouflage of purple emperor caterpillars and I'm presuming they do this hunched posture it's quite unusual to mimic the curvature of the leaf if i can move that round a little bit and 
We still see it in focus there towards the left. Mirrors the shape of the leaf. There's no outline sticking up at all. Brilliant camouflage. Personally, I still wish the rest had on the underside of the leaf because they're just totally exposed to everything. Although in really hot weather, they will seek shade. No need for that in late April. A sight I never thought I would see in Nottinghamshire. Never, if I'd lived to be a hundred, did I ever consider it. Yet here we are. 